What would any Batman movie be without its villains, eh? In some cases, the Caped Crusader's cinematic antagonists have even categorically stolen the spotlight away from the hero himself, in turn delivering iconic, even definitive interpretations of legendary comic book villains. But beyond the quality of the movies themselves, how do all of Batman's major cinematic villains stack up? Given that several of Batman's most revered adversaries have received multiple big screen renditions, which ones come out on top? Well, let's find out, shall we? Gareth here from whatculture.com, and here is every Batman movie villain ever ranked from worst to best. Number 18, Bane, Batman and Robin. The de facto worst entry on this list goes to Batman and Robin's Bane. Based on the simple fact that his portrayal in the campy franchise annihilating blockbuster is basically tantamount to character assassination. Though wrestler Jeep Swenson certainly meets the hulking physical requirements of the role, Bane is relegated to goofy sidekick status throughout. More frustratingly, the criminal mastermind Bane of the comics is nowhere to be seen. Here he's a rail thin criminal who gets unwillingly transformed into a clunking brute, who even ends up working as Poison Ivy's chauffeur in one baffling sequence. Number 17, Poison Ivy, Batman and Robin. Poison Ivy is unquestionably one of Batman's most iconic and recognizable villains, and on paper actually seemed like a perfect fit for Joel Schumacher's more elevated theatrical brand of Batman movies. To her credit, Uma Thurman's commitment is never in doubt, delivering a deliciously campy performance as the seductive eco-terrorist at the center of most everybody's least favorite Batman film. But if you like it, then good for you. But as a character, her Ivy is Gossamer Thin at best, a chest-beating feminist who wants to save the world from the thoughtless ravages of man, and has a whale of a time manipulating every man in her midst. Yet there's disappointingly little meat on the character's bones, and the movie never gives as much of a glimpse at Ivy's interior self, as is necessary for any great Batman villain. Number 16, Mr. Freeze, Batman and Robin. Mr. Freeze is one of the trickier Batman villains to get right in live-action form, given the potential for utter goofiness which, admittedly, wasn't much of a problem in Batman and Robin. This iteration of Dr. Victor Freeze certainly isn't good, but it'd be considerably worse without the larger-than-life presence of Arnold Schwarzenegger, who dials up the camp to deliver a Mr. Freeze who seems better suited for a spot on the WWE roster. To his credit, Arnie tears through the daft ice-adjacent one-liners with an unrelenting enthusiasm, and both the character's costume and icy lair are among the film's stronger elements. Even if, like Poison Ivy, he's a razor-thin character as written. Number 15, Two-Face, Batman Forever. Though it'll be forever disappointing that we never got to see Billy D. Williams portray Two-Face in the Burton verse as originally planned, Tommy Lee Jones casting as the psychotic former DA nevertheless seemed inspired in theory. Much like Thurman, Jones is clearly having a hoot mugging for the camera and cackling maniacally, though many fans complain that his portrayal seemed closer to the Joker than Two-Face. The cost costume and makeup are impossible to take seriously too, and Jones ends up taking an unavoidable backseat to Jim Carrey's Riddler. But the star still does his best with what he has. There's no forgiving that howlingly terrible death scene though. Number 14, Talia Al Ghul, The Dark Knight Rises. Though Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight saga boasted a generally robust gallery of villains, Nolan dropped the ball with his depiction of Talia Al Ghul in The Dark Knight Rises. A big part of the problem is that Talia is hidden in the shadows for a solid two thirds of the movie, donning the alias of philanthropist Miranda Tate, a false identity many fans saw through immediately. It's certainly not Marion Cotillard's fault, given what little she has to work with here. A garden variety revenge arc for Batman killing her father, Raz, and little else really. Topping it all off is that infamously terrible death scene, one that baffled even Cotillard herself. Number 13, The Riddler, Batman Forever. Jim Carrey's portrayal of The Riddler is probably one of the more divisive comic book movie performances of all time. Wherever you fall, Carrey's commitment to the part is never in doubt. And while such a near literally cartoonish iteration of the classic antagonist might seem hokey and a bit dated today, it ran in perfect tandem with the candy colored aesthetic and heightened tone of the Schumacher Batman films. Carrey is an absolute dynamo in this movie and steals every single scene he's in, prancing around in his form hugging green jumpsuit and later a sparkly silver number. Number 12, Catwoman The Dark Knight Rises. As is typical for the character, Catwoman isn't so much an outright villain as an anti-hero, starting out as an eat-the-rich thief who burglarizes Bruce Wayne's home, only to later join forces with Batman and even get romantically entangled with him. Hathaway certainly brings the slinky sex appeal to the part audiences expect, even if Nolan clearly struggles to reconcile the character's inherent campiness with the realism of the world he's created. Hathaway also lacks the sizzling chemistry with Christian Bale that made the Michelle Pfeiffer-Michael Keaton pairing in Batman Returns 
return such a pulse quickening delight. And so her face turn never fully convinces to be honest. Number 11, the Penguin, the Batman. Though the Batman really only gives us an introduction to this more grounded take on the Penguin, it's one hell of a start to be sure. If certainly lacking the statuesque, immediately attention-grabbing quality of Danny DeVito's prior portrayal, that's very much by design. When we meet him in Matt Reeves' film, he's a mid-level gangster who hasn't yet cemented himself as an iconic criminal mastermind. Nevertheless, Colin Farrell brings exuberant charm and welcome humour to the character, while still veering clear of the campier prior iterations of the figure. Oz doesn't get a whole lot to do in the movie, and much of his presence is simply laying the groundwork for a more prominent part in future installments. But it's an incredibly promising debut regardless. Number 10, Scarecrow, The Dark Knight Saga. Batman begins quite sensibly eschewed pitting Batman against an A-list Batman villain on his first time up to bat. Sorry. Opting instead for the lower tier, though still much love, Scarecrow. Though Murphy certainly lacks an inherently intimidating physical presence, he brings a quiet menace to the part as he manipulates the criminal justice system to his own unhinged ends. His fear toxin admittedly does a lot of the heavy lifting here, particularly during the delirious sequence where it's used on Scarecrow himself. Himself. But Dr. Jonathan Crane is nevertheless a refreshingly grounded-ish villain, whose brief reappearances in the two sequels were most certainly welcome. Number 9, Max Shrek, Batman Returns. Max Shrek is the only villain on this list created specifically for the Batman movies. Despite that and ultimately playing third fiddle to both Catwoman and the Penguin, Shrek is a memorable antagonist in his own right. A string-pulling industrialist sociopath who serves as a somewhat more grounded counterpoint to the film's other villains. Christopher Walken is terrific as the all-too-real businessman, scarcely concealing his malevolence beneath a superficially slick facade. The character might also suffer the most hilariously brutal death of any Batman movie villain ever, smooched with a taser by Catwoman and charred to a skeletal crisp. Number 8, Ra's al Ghul, Batman Begins. Though having a white guy play Ra's al Ghul likely wouldn't fly today, Liam Neeson's portrayal of the character was remarkable in almost all the right ways. Starting out as Bruce's mentor under the Elias Henry Ducard, he attempts to insert Bruce into the League of Shadows ranks before their, uh, philosophical disagreement about killing people sends them on their separate ways, let's say. And while the marketing played up the fact that Ken Watanabe would be playing Ra's al Ghul, he's ultimately just a decoy, with Ducard returning from the dead mid-movie and revealing himself to Bruce as the real Raz. Neeson's authoritative manner is perfect for the forthright self-righteous terrorist, steadfast in his belief that decaying cities must be raised from within so they can flourish anew. He's cunning, ambitious, and a solid physical match for Bruce, despite being considerably older. His death still irks many fans though, given how smugly Nolan tries to argue that Batman doesn't kill Raz, but he left him on that train, didn't he? Number 7, The Penguin, Batman Returns. Danny DeVito's iteration of The Penguin may be wildly over the top, but it's also perfectly matched to the tonal and stylistic tendencies of director Tim Burton. DeVito gives a masterful performance as the tragically doomed villain, who despite chowing down on fish, riding around Gotham in a giant rubber decky, and having literal penguin minions, is still intensely intimidating and sympathetic all at once. There's an awful lot going on. The design of the character, both in terms of costume and makeup, is magnificently disgusting, but it's truly DeVito's fearless turn that brings Oswald Copperpot roaring to life. Number six, the Riddler, the Batman. The Riddler is far from the easiest character to get right in a gritty, realistic Batman movie, but Matt Reeves successfully brings him down to earth in The Batman. Here, the character's often goofy theatrics are eschewed for a more believably unhinged provocateur, a serial killer blatantly modeled on the Zodiac Killer, whose deranged murder devices feel just believable enough. With his deeply personal reasons for taunting Batman and wishing to tear Gotham down from the inside out, he's one of the more compellingly motivated Batman movie villains, even if underscored by an undeniable crazed psychopathy. Number 5, Two-Face the Dark Knight. Deciding not to give Two-Face his own movie but instead squeeze Harvey Dent's downfall into the third act of the Dark Knight remains controversial with fans. But Nolan and Aaron Eckhart absolutely made every second of his screen time count. Heath Ledger's Joker is such a commanding presence in the film that it's easy to forget just how brilliant Eckhart is as Dent slash Two-Face. His chiseled jaw and charismatic manner are notes perfect
perfect for the charming district attorney. And he's no less terrific once his face is burned and the Joker nudges him into tragic villain mode. Aided by fantastically revolting sinewy makeup slash VFX and a devastating fall from Grace arc, Two-Face so perfectly embodies the film's iconic quote, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Number 4, Catwoman Batman Returns Even three decades after the release of Batman Returns, there remains a dearth of iconic female supervillains in comic book movies. And though ultimately an anti-hero, Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman remains the inarguable GOAT. Where to even begin with this? The handcrafted leather costume is fantastic, Pfeiffer's performance is at once troublingly sexy and genuinely terrifying, and the character's arc is a gratifyingly tragedy-tinged one. It goes without saying that a woman seeking revenge on her maniacal boss who attempted to murder her holds up extremely well today. Though for many, the sure highlight of Tim Burton's Catwoman will be her red-hot chemistry with Michael Keaton's Batman. Batman Returns is famously the horniest of all the Batman films and possibly of all superhero movies, period. But Pfeiffer crucially imbues her Selina Kyle with a pervading sense of danger at all times. Number 3. The Joker Batman 1989 The mere fact that Jack Nicholson agreed to portray the Joker in the 89 Batman did a lot of good in legitimizing superhero films as real works of cinema. But rather than deliver a more groundedly menacing performance as you might expect from a multi-Oscar winner, Nicholson went the other way entirely, making his Joker a walking cartoon character in the best way possible. Nicholson's wildly over-the-top murderous gangster interpretation of the Joker is a perfect mirror image of Michael Keaton's more subdued yet arguably no less nuts Batman. Few actors could make audiences take a villain seriously who says never rub another man's rhubarb, and yet Nicholson finds just the right tonal through line, delving deeper into the character's manic, maximalist brand of psychopathy than any other big screen portrayal. Number 2. Bane The Dark Knight Rises Tom Hardy's Bane had an incredibly hard act to follow after Heath Ledger's Joker, and though he never reaches the same era-defining heights, he's nevertheless a fantastic villain in his own right. From that opening James Bond S CIA plane hijack sequence, Bane is cemented as an incredibly intimidating threat, evidenced by both Hardy's immense transformation and that voice. Hardy renders Bane as both Batman's greatest physical and intellectual threat throughout the Dark Knight saga, a man capable of breaking the bat and also of weaponizing Gotham's disdain for the hypocritical elite into outright anarchy. While it's undeniably disappointing that Bane turns out to be Talia al Ghul's mere loved-up lapdog, Hardy's interpretation makes Bane a true larger-than-life presence that slots effortlessly into Nolan's more literal-minded vision of Gotham. Number 1. The Joker The Dark Knight Of course, nothing else was ever going to take the number one spot, was it? The impact and influence of Heath Ledger's Joker cannot be denied, for despite having only around 30 minutes of screen time throughout The Dark Knight, he lives rent-free in the heads of both Batman and the audience for every single second. Per the more grounded mission statement of Nolan's trilogy, Ledger's Joker feels more palpably believable, less a campy theatrical clown than a face-paint-wearing scarred terrorist driven only by a desire to disrupt for its own sake. On one hand, there's the brilliance of Ledger's icky chops-licking performance, so expertly calibrated to generate maximum audience discomfort, and Nolan's smartly restrained characterization, withholding the finer details of the Clown Prince of Crime's origin story. The Dark Knight's Joker casts such a colossal shadow that he manages to entirely upstage Batman in his own damn movie, something even Christian Bale himself has admitted. Ledger's Joker will forever be unavoidably entangled within the shock of the actor's untimely death prior to the Dark Knight's release. But on its own merits, his Joker is the high watermark for not only Batman movie villains, but superhero movie villains full stop. And that is our list, but how would you rank the Bat villains? Let us know how you would in the comment section right down below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, if you like this kind of thing, then head on over to whatculture.com and find some more fantastic articles just like the one this video you're watching right this second is based on. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you very much for watching this video today. Hopefully, I'll see your faces very, very soon, but in the meantime, be good to yourself and hey, I'm Batman.